How do I know when I'm hearing authentic sounds that were made by these force beings? I get asked this question occasionally, mostly from skeptics who really don't want an actual answer because their question was made to be rhetorical, presumably to help my small mind understand, I guess. The sexy answer to that would be the headline grabbing vocals or howls. That's what everyone wants to hear. That are talking in a strange language. But the sexy stuff like that is sometimes hard to positively attribute to the unknown. But it's what everyone wants to hear. The reality is, the best sign for activity in your area is still the old-fashioned wood knock. It takes something with thumbs to grasp at least one piece of wood, and that is the smoking gun as it gets in this business. Sub-zero temperature tree sap knocking notwithstanding, of course. I remember in my youth waiting for the school bus to come pick my brother and I up in mid-January. Some mornings would be 20 degrees below or worse, Fahrenheit. We would have to stand at the end of our driveway on our gravel-covered rural road, usually never more than 10 minutes before the bus would come down the hill. There were more than a few occasions when we would stare into the woods across from our driveway while waiting. The air was so cold, thick and still. It seemed heavy as water. You could just feel the forest writhing against the assault. We could hear a pin drop from a mile away, it seemed. The only sound we would hear would be the occasional wood knock, usually about one a minute in those temperatures as the tree sap would expand and crack the wood. That is the main reason I don't put any faith in wood knocks in the wintertime, as being from anything other than this process. So now that it's July, I pay a lot more attention to these knocks. For this video, I'm going to don the skeptic's hat and tackle the differences between wood striking wood and the sound of distant gunshots or fireworks. This is a spectrogram view of an authentic wood knock in my new area. I have been getting some compelling audio recently, as my previous two videos can attest to. But what solidified this area as quote unquote active are these knocks. I call these sounds whoop knocks to be precise. Because the critters in this new area have a propensity to do these whoops that are usually followed by knocks. Now, I've only sampled a small percentage of the audio from this new area so far this summer. And these are just a few of these whoop knock response sounds I've found to date. I'm sure there's many, many more if I were to dig deeper. Let me just play them here for you, and I'll talk more about them in a minute.
If I were to hear only one of these exchanges, I would be tempted to make a statement such as this. I see little evidence to suspect that this so-called whoop is anything other than a large dog bark, and I'd have to leave it at that. But when I hear these two sounding off repeatedly, it raises an eyebrow, maybe both brows actually. These are occurring in reverse order as well. What I mean by that, doesn't the strange sound come first with a dog barking after the strange sound? If this were just a dog, why would the dog bark before the wood knock? Does this dog possess some kind of precognition to where it barks before the wood knock? This illogical dynamic is not limited to whoop barks. Or can we just get over ourselves and admit this is dog bark mimicry? We also hear this barred owl sound off before a few of these knocks. This is why I suspect barred owl mimicry at this location as well. These are much more problematic because I'm hearing a lot of what I believe to be authentic barred owl calls in this area as well. The only ones I'm able to question are those ones you're hearing now that are preceding our wood knocker. So how do I know the difference between a wood knock the sound of a distant gun or maybe fireworks. It is July after all and I am hearing fireworks just about every night between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. The answer to that isn't so easy. Some of us can just tell the difference with the naked ear. But for the skeptics out there, who are demanding a little bit more concrete in their guidelines, we have to put the sounds into a signal processing program to differentiate them. Here we have the distant sounds of either fireworks or I'd guess a 12 gauge shotgun. This is northern Wisconsin after all and the sound of shotgun going off at any and all times during the day is nothing new. I hear them all the time. Whether it be fireworks or firearms, they appear to be the same on spectrogram as seen here, both created by exploding gunpowder, so it shouldn't surprise anyone that they should look identical in spectrogram view. Listen to these examples here and see if you can memorize these sounds. Here, I've zoomed into one of these sounds, and I want to point something out to you that all gunpowder blasts have in common. They all have a continuous and uninterrupted signal from top to bottom of the spike, often with the larger blasts having a more robust base that continues down into the infrasound barrier. Now compare that to the spectrogram view of a wood knock as seen here. Do you hear the difference? This higher pitched baseball bat like ping isn't always going to be present with wood knocks. That's usually only heard if one of the pieces of wood is green and solid. Moreover than just being able to tell with a naked ear, we should always see some separation in the actual spike of a wood knock when in spectrogram view. See these gaps in here? This is because it takes two to tango so to speak. 
We have presumably two different pieces of wood impacting one another. Each piece, having its own separate internal structure, would give off slightly different sounds. These subtle differences between the two pieces of wood can be seen with these separations as both are sounding off simultaneously. I've been doing this for long enough now that when searching through the spectrogram in a fresh audio file, I can tell the difference before even listening to it, just by how it appears in my spectrogram. In addition, the gunpowder based sounds have a much broader and lower reverberation to them than a knock would. Listen to them side by side and focus on the reverberation heard afterwards. you with that and I hope to see you folks down in the comments below and I thank you for your time. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video.